Oh my God, that smells so good. Thank you, BMP, Audrey, what's up? Check these guys out. We even got a sticker. P and stick. These are OEM Audi RS7 spark plugs. They are just a step colder than uh, what I have stock, so it's better for the higher boost. They're made by NGK. Anyway, so now we'll go pull mine and see how terrible they do or do not look. And if they look bad, then obviously we're gonna swap them. All right. Well, here we are. First step is to pull this baby off. Ah. Set her off to the side. There's the RX-7 motor. Just throw this up here. We got the toolbox. We got the magnetic uh, plug removal tool. So that'll be our number one tool. But uh, so what you do, you take off these top nuts on each one and that'll let you remove the ground and then you take off the bottom nut which holds the uh, coil packs down and you'll pull the coil packs out after you pop these clips two three that one's already undone and then you'll be able to uh, take the spark plugs out so when you're doing spark plugs you typically want to have the motor at uh, operating temperature so go for you know five ten minute drive because uh, heat causes things to expand cold causes things to uh, not expand. See, I'm bad with words when I get on the camera. Anyway, so it'll make it easier for the spark plugs to come out if the motor is warm. You'll have a less chance of, of them breaking, which I've never heard of it happening happening on a Volkswagen, really. Um, not going the fridge. <laughs> but uh, I've heard of it happening on uh, like older V8s and shit, so. We'll get the tools ready here. There isn't too much we need. I think you really only need a 10 to get these off. And then, uh, yeah, pull the packs out. So we'll, we'll get to that. There we go. Just one, two, three, four. It really helps if you have a magnetic bowl thing. So I'm going to go find that right quick. Apparently, we don't have one. So a uh, old coffee mug will have to do. It's pretty simple. It's easy stuff. It's just hot. Kind of burn my fingers a little bit, but I try to wear, um, aware, <clears throat> avoid wearing gloves at all costs just because I like to actually like feel what I'm touching. Like I feel the threads or whatever it is I may be doing. Um, or sometimes you're like blind putting a bolt into a tight spot or whatever. So I'm not a gloves kind of guy unless I'm using, put gloves on to do like some fuel maintenance or something to do with greasing something but I typically don't really wear gloves so this chart you compare your spark plug to whatever it is that they have said and I'll tell you like if you're running lean or too rich or all these different scenarios they can tell you like how your motor's acting in the long run so they could just be fine because it's only been like 13 14 thousand miles on them so I'm thinking with the ethanol and all the boost and all the driving and might as well and that misfire kind of scared me like I said so let's pull these babies so these babies are pretty pretty warm but a little twist and pull and you can see they're pretty they move pretty well actually this is really freaking hot but I'll lay these down in order this is numero uno excuse the noise sorry got you on the tripod but you can look down in there see the old plug of roos one, two, three, four, and then here's our coil packs. That's what they look like. Volkswagen Auto Group, made in Germany, Peru, or the fuck that is. Oh yeah. 
This is all pretty simple stuff, but there might be someone out there that doesn't know or just wants a little walkthrough just to inspire confidence. I, I've watched, I watched this before I did it for the first time just because, so I know there'll be someone out there that wants to see it. So uh, like I said earlier, this actually has a magnet in it to hold the spark plug when you pull it out. Most of them have rubber. I actually got this off of ECS tubing. It's tubing. ECS tuning. It's um, it's Schwaben, and this fits all the way down in there, perfectly. You can see, it sits almost kind of flush there. So, just throw this baby on there, and they'll pop right out. So, what I'll do, I'll loosen each one first, and then pull them out one by one and lay them out, and then I'll compare it to the original spark plugs and compare it to the new ones, and we'll go from there. I don't know if this is recording. Okay. You can look down in there. Each one of these look real nice. They all pretty much look like that. So these are them pulled out. Got a little light on it so it looks real decent. They look pretty good, honestly. So you can see on this part, I forget what it's called, but it's a, a little bit more of the white stuff going on. Hopefully I can get it to focus here rather than on those and obviously the style is a little bit different but they really don't look bad i don't know what's going on with this one it's weird yeah, give me a hard time to focus they really don't look all that bad i might keep them i don't know why they're so black though it might be because of all the oil that's been going through the uh the motor since i don't have a catch can which the catch can should be here like tomorrow or the next day but yeah i'll pull out the new ones and we'll compare once again Okay, so I took a minute here, did some research. These are the new ones. Let's see, I'm gonna get it to focus here for you. This is the same type of tip style as the uh, OE. So I went through the forms, I, I searched both uh, part numbers. This, uh, these ones were the second revision, I believe, and now this is the fourth. This is the newest revision. And they're actually made by NGK. These ones were made by a different brand, actually. So these have the side firing. As you can see, it fires from the side. And this is the OEM style, where it fires from the top. And these are actually better, um, apparently. And, uh, yeah. So, I think they said something about the seat. I don't know. You can see the way they sit. These, these are the really same. I must have been talking about, oh yeah, this one is a little bit different. But. So we're going to go ahead and swap them. They said uh, the, the, ver the side firing version is actually, it, it's meant to be changed at 15,000 miles. I was actually reading a chart earlier about the OE spark plugs, and if you're not tuned or running ethanol or anything, it's like a 30,000 mile change. So I'm pretty much on point at 13. I always do shit early anyway. Um, which actually reminds me, I need to do my uh, transmission fluid here soon. But uh, that's another dollar for another day. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of lube on the end of these new ones. I already checked the gap. It is specified at 0 0.024 plus or minus 0 0.002. And uh, they're all within that range. I didn't have to change any of them. They're supposed to come pre-gapped from the factory because the way they're welded, they're really hard to adjust. So if I had to adjust it, um, the tool that I have wouldn't even work anyway. So I'm glad that they're all uh, within parameters. So we'll go ahead and, like I said, loop these up, throw these in, and uh, let her warm up. Go for a drive maybe. And about, let's see, it's almost four now. I've been taking some some breaks, and my roommates came home, and we've been talking and bullshitting. But so yeah, like I said, it's almost four. I got a race around eight against this, I think it's a Challenger, an older Challenger with a supercharger on it. I don't know, I'm gonna have to text my buddy and get get the deets on that one, but we racing for 20 bucks. He called me out, so hopefully he spins a little bit because uh, we don't have launch control yet for the manuals. Fuck me, right? Trigger DSG, I don't wanna hear it. Manuals all day, save the manuals, hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're going to go race him later. I got plenty of ethanol in the tank. She's running real good. Went and drove around a little bit last night. Oh man, let me tell you about last night. So I go, it was like five o'clock and I was like, shit, it's like still super hot out. I don't want to go to the gym, it's packed. The AC's broken there. So I don't want to go there when it's 
midday, hot as shit, tons of people. So I was like, you know what? I'll take like an hour, hour and a half nap, and like eat a snack, and I'll go to the gym. There'll be less people. Everyone leaves there about like the, the crowd leaves about six, six thirty is when a lot of people leave. So I go to take a nap. I wake up at freaking nine thirty at night, starving dicks. I was pissed. I was like, God damn it. I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna try and go back to sleep. Couldn't sleep, so I got out of bed at like 10. Ran to McDonald's, grabbed some food, which was freaking awful, terrible idea. And I came home, caught up on my YouTube for a bit, and I went to the gym. I didn't get home from the gym till like two in the morning. Took a shower, laid in bed, laid in bed, laid in bed, listened to music, couldn't sleep, didn't get to bed. I remember looking at the clock at like 3.20, and then I think I fell asleep shortly after that. And then I had to be up at like 5.20 to get ready for work. So I'm freaking dead tired. And now I don't even want to cook tonight. And this heat is just killer. It's terrible. But uh, anyway, let's get these plugs back in. Boot it up and boot it up, ready to go. Then, let's just be the reverse process. We'll pop them in. We'll get them barely hand tight. Spark plugs are one thing you don't want to do German torque on. No guten tight bullshit. You want to make sure you use a torque wrench. They're 17 inch pounds or don't quote me. There's 17, one of the two. I'm gonna go with inch pounds, yeah, because that only makes real sense. It's not much torque, but uh, yeah, so you'll put them in hand tight and then go over them with a the torque wrench and then pop the uh, coil packs back in, then your post, then your ground, then your nut, and you're good to go. So at this point, they're already hand tight in. I got my handy dandy old ass fucking style torque wrench, so we'll go. They need to be 17 foot pounds. I was thinking wrong. So we'll go right about there in between 15 and 20 and call it good. So we got the uh, camera's all fucked up. We got it all torqued down. Next is the uh, cool packs. And then, uh, yeah, you seen what I did earlier. Maddie's over here. What are you doing? Oh, you just took off your air filter? Yeah. Bum, 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 What was wrong with your gasket? <laughs> Holy crap, how did that happen? I don't know, probably just Just worked. over time. Yeah, my yeah. guess would be, uh, cause I'm missing a bolt, I guess it unfitted it, so. Oh. So it's just sitting on uh, two, so. Oh, so you were talking about going to Burns? Mm-hmm. Well, look down there in my drawer, I got plenty of freaking bolts and stuff. Yeah, there. I looked. Nothing? None. Uh -huh. Yeah, I even looked at my fucking door. Yeah, we'll just take the two that you have and with you. Yeah. And go down there. But make sure the threads are the same because you got that thread pitch. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. I also need a new gasket. I'm not sure where to get one of those from because I got this thing on Amazon. So. Um, that's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to cane in. The auto zone? Advance? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. That's fucked. Maybe Harley himself. So I'll show you how to put one back in and everything else is the same. But you'll. Pull this back, and you'll feel it seat and catch, and then just all the way down. And don't worry if it cut, if it, like you put pressure on it, it, sometimes it rises back up a little bit, but that's what that bolt's for. So you'll do that for each one. Stick your bolt back in, get her hand tight, and then you put the ground on. You always wanna make sure when you tighten that post that that is tighter than what you tighten the nut, because when you go to loosen the nut, and if that's tighter than what you did this, then the whole thing is gonna come loose, and you're gonna have a bad time. So this is always tighter than the top one. Remember that. Right here, they hold your coral packs from, from moving at all. So you wanna have these posts tighter than the nut you're gonna put here on top. So if you make this nut tighter here on top, and you go to loosen it, it's gonna loosen this entire assembly together. And you don't want that because then you'll need something down here to hold this nut while you undo this one. You said, okay, well, that's not really that big of a deal, right? Well, once you get this snug all the way down there and this copper piece is also in the way, you need a really baby thin wrench to get on there. So these don't really need to even be that tight. It's just the ground. So a little like click, you can tight, done. These tighten down a little bit, but not too tight, because I do believe the head is aluminum and all this up here, so you don't want to fuck up any of those threads. They're relatively soft, especially when the motor's hot, so go ahead and do all those, and then tighten these down a click, and then when you go to put these on, you want to line them up before you click any of them in. If you put this one in first, you're not going to be able to get this one, this one, and this one, so you want to kind of 
get them all in place first, and then you can click them all down together. So, there you go. Tip from the wise. I've made all those mistakes that I just listed, and it's a pain in the ass. So, if you're watching this and you're doing this, pay attention. Oh, what I wanted to show you real quick. So the catch can I'm getting will replace this entire system right here. The hose that goes from here back to the turbo where it's taking all my fucking oil. So it'll take, it'll be all this and some of this stuff. It's gonna mount right here, actually. This top part, this is a two-piece washer system. So, uh, you can't really see down there. But this top piece will come off with just this bolt. And then I'll have an extension running from down there and then I'll have a new uh, fill port right here. And the catch can will set here. And I'll have two sets of hoses going in here. And then this whole system gets replaced by some really nice billet stuff. And then uh, the new holes will be ran back there. So, I think I watched a DIY on it quite some time ago. I'm gonna watch it again just for shits and giggles, but it should be pretty easy. And then we'll see how she performs on track day. This PVC system is getting so hot because all the driving I do and then go race, she doesn't really get time to cool off sometimes. The, the, the heat itself from the bay is causing that system to fail. It's not like my oil temperature, my water temp and all that, the temperatures are staying consistent at all times. And I think it's just like the heat from the bay itself not getting much uh, airflow. Like when I'm sitting in line at the track, the line is forever long. So you, you hit the track, you're waiting, hitting the track, waiting, like, yeah. So cool down time is definitely a need. It seems to be on these cars, but uh, yeah, we're done. house for a cookout and stuff after the races and I'm just dead I'm dead tired I like I said I barely slept but uh I, got, I had a call out to race tonight and uh that was a SRT8 charger with supercharger I don't know what brand it was but that it was fully built motor pretty sure it was on race fuel I think it was freaking mean I think if I would have had launch control I would have been able to like get up ahead of them like quite a bit and he would have been playing catch up towards the end. I think he still would have won, but it wouldn't have been as bad. But, uh, yeah. Oh, well. I just did blow smoke afterwards a little bit too, so. I really hope that catch can solves all that. If not, I'm gonna be pretty upset. But, as you can tell, I'm dead tired. I'll finish this edit, upload it, eat real quick, and I'm going to bed, so. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like if you like it. Subscribe, and I'll catch you on the flip-flop.